what is the output of this java program well this kind of tricky coding questions you may get in a java interviews so here is the main class it contains four overloaded print methods and here is the main method which is entry point for this program and here the object of the main class is created and print method is get called so this is an example for method overloading or a compile time polymorphism so at a compilation time the java compiler will determine which print method it have to call based on the argument type so here is basically the order java compiler will first look for the int primitive type and then long primitive type and then integer wrapper class and then variable argument well if i run this program it should call the print method it takes integer type as a argument okay next if i comment out this and if i rerun the program it should call the print method it takes long type okay so basically the java compiler will choose the appropriate method at a compile time based on the type of the argument passed during the method invocation what is the output of this java program well this kind of simple coding questions you may get in a java interviews so here is a main class it contains three static blocks and here is a main method which is entry point for this java program so here you can see there are three static blocks each block print the numbers 1 2 3 and this static block is executed when the main class is loaded by the JVM. Well, the order of execution of these static blocks is determined by in which order they appear in the class. For example, here first this block will execute and then followed by this and then followed by this. If I run this program, you can see the output 1, 2, 3. Okay. So these static blocks are basically executed when the class is loaded by the JVM. And each static block is executed in the order they appear in the class. What is the output of this Java program? Well, this kind of simple coding questions you may get in a Java interviews. So this program contains three classes, class A, class B, class C, and each class contains a instance initializer block. So notice here, this is not a static block. This is the instance initializer block, and this block will get called whenever we create object of the class. And notice here, this is a inheritance hierarchy. Class B extends class A, class C extends class B. And here is a main method, which is entry point for this program and within a main method the object of the class C is created well notice here the order of execution of these instance initializer blocks is determined by inheritance hierarchy whenever you create object of the subclass the parent class instance initializer block is first get executed and then followed by the subclass instance initializer blocks in this example the instance initializer block from class A will get first execute and then followed by class B class C okay so if I run this program you can see the output 1, 2, 3. What is the output of this simple Java program? Well, this kind of simple coding questions you may get in a Java interviews. So here are the three classes A, B, C and each class contains a static block to print, you know, string A, B, C. Next, we have main class within that main method, which is entry point for this Java program. And within the main method, the object of the class C is created. And look at here, each class has a static block so static block is basically we use to initialize the static variables or call the static method but in this example we are just printing some text to the console well in java whenever a class is loaded then its static initializer block will get executed the order of execution of these static blocks are determined by class hierarchy the static block from class a will first get executed because it is a top level parent class and then followed by the static blocks from class B and class C. Well, if I run this program, you can see the output A, B, C. What is the output of this Java program? So here is a parent class. It has a static block and instance block and a constructor. Here is a child class that extends parent class and it has a static block, instance initializer block and a constructor. And here is a main method, which is an entry point for this class. And within a main method, the object of the child class is created. Well, first we need to understand the order of execution of static block, instance block and constructor. Well, this is the inheritance. So first the parent class will get loaded and then its static block will get executed. That's why the A will get first printed. And then when class child class is loaded, then its static block is executed and then D will get print. Next, when object of the child class is created, then the parent class instance block will get executed and then it will print a B. Next, the parent class constructor will get called and it will print C. And then it will call the instance block of child class and followed by the constructor of child class. If I run this program, you can see the output 